This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Food and Farmer series. I am your solo host today, Justine Spiritu. I'm happy to be here. I haven't been here in a while. As a reminder, every other week, uh, myself or Matt Johnson or Stephanie bring on uh, local farmers, restaurants, um, different companies that are working on local food and have local products to sell and that they're developing here. And we're this big network of folks kind of growing food and products and helping each other out. And so we always like to bring folks on and get their backstory and hear about what they're doing, how it's unique to Hawaii and who they're collaborating with and what they're learning. So today we have a special guest. Uh, her name is Donna Hayes. She is with the Kauai Coffee Company and she is the business area manager. Is that right? Area business manager. <laughs> area <Yes>. business manager. <laughs> awesome. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, th I really think you are the first coffee company that we've had on, um, which is uh, interesting. You know, coffee seems to be such a relevant uh, crop here in Hawaii. So maybe if you could give me a little bit of background about coffee in Hawaii briefly and then kind of get into Kauai Coffee Company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, um, you know, coffee in Hawaii is really just world famous. Everybody is very familiar with Kona yeah. and then Kau recently followed suit. It's kind of making itself on the map. Um, but Hawaiian coffee has long been known as you know, premium quality. We've got that, you know, rich volcanic soil that is high in minerals and nutrients for the coffee. So it's really just a perfect place for this crop. Uh -huh. And it's a perfect place for a lot of crops. And we actually didn't start out as a coffee farm. Um, in about the turn of the century, the late 1800s, um, sugar was starting to be planted on the island. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, a lot of the immigrant workers who like migrated here started working on the sugar fields. A lot of those were on Kauai at the McBride Sugar Plantation. Okay. Um, and it's right on the southwest side of Kauai. And um, so we started out as McBride Sugar Plantation. Uh, and then over the years, uh, a lot of agricultural diversification was taking place. Um, as I'm sure you know, um, just last year, the, the last sugar farm on right. Maui just closed yeah. um, and um, just kind of diversified into different crops, um, you know, all the sugar, sugar farms over the years. So um, in the 80s, they started playing around on McBride with um, coffee. And then in 1987, Kauai Coffee was officially born. Um, so we've been around, we've been growing coffee since then um, with a little hiatus when Hurricane Iniki hit the island. Um, in 92, mm -hmm. of course, we all know, um, really devastating uh, event for the island, and it really wiped out a lot of our, our crop, and we had to start from scratch. Um, coffee trees takes five or six years to uh, mature um, once you start planting. So once we, once we started fresh, um, about by 1998, uh, we were back in full force. Um, and at that time, we uh, built the, our current visitor center so any guests, tourists can come visit the island, check out our visitor center, um, do kind of a self-guided tour thing. So that happened and with that renovation after the hurricane? Exactly, exactly. So and that we, was the 90s? Ni said? Yeah, 98 was when we really reestablished, built the visitor center, and we became what we are today. Um, so been a lot of changes since then. We're always trying to move onward and upward. And about six years ago, we got acquired by a company named Massimo Zanetti Beverage. Um, they're an Italian company, but their U.S. headquarters is based on the East Coast, and um, they manage a lot of brands that you might have heard of, like Hill Brothers, um, Sigafrido, Chock Full of Nuts, and they took on Kauai Coffee, and it's been a really amazing, amazing ride with them because um, they've, you know, had a lot of resources to help, um, you know, modernize our equipment and um, help with um, some financial things with regards to marketing and, you know, roasting so operations. So did that so. really amp up production then? You know, it's been, I would say what it, what it did was it amped up quality. So it's just been, we've been working to get ourselves on the map as a well, you know, high quality and just really have people n know what Kauai coffee is. A lot, of, a lot of people know about Kona. They're yeah. starting to know about Kau, and we want to be right up there with them. I'm sorry, Kau is? Kau is also on the Big Island. Okay. 
and um, they're kind of more on the on the south side of the Big Island. Okay. So in addition to that, um, our general manager, Fred Cowell, um, he's been with us for a couple years now, and he's a second generation Kona farmer. So it's pretty cool because um, we're a large farm. We're 3,100 acres, um, which is about five miles by three miles. And that's the largest and farm in Hawaii. And it is. In yep, the U.S. Exactly. Total, right. Exactly. And um, Fred came from Kona, and it's been really cool since he's on, been on board because he's been able to bring small farming practices where their focus is really on quality and bring that to a large scale operation like ours. Okay, so what does that what does that mean? What's that difference of, uh, or what's something kind of specific of, like a small practice or small well, farm practice sure. that you guys have been able to? Yeah, because I, I always kind of hear that, like if you go big, then mm -hmm. you kind of lose that quality or those kind of yeah. things. So just something specific to well, coffee. I, I think I would say um, many larger farms in general uh -huh. are really just focusing on quantity and output and stuff like that. But uh -huh. um, we're really trying to make an effort and looking at soil quality and what can we do to make that better um, across the board or in, you know, segments of our farm to um, really bring up the quality so that when we, um, you know, when that gets produced and, and milled and mm -hmm. roasted, then it's, it's just a, a higher quality cup. So okay. it's just awesome. really start to finish from yeah. from the growth stage all the way to, you know, when you when you have that yeah. cup of coffee. Okay, and we'll get yeah. kind of more into that specific stuff in mm -hmm. the next segment, but I want to hear more about um, what other things are like unique to your, uh, to your guys' farm. And, and I imagine it's since Hawaii is so, it's great to grow coffee here, is it kind of like oversaturated with people growing coffee? Or can you kind of explain that and how you guys distinguish? Um, if, if people are like sourcing from other places, where you guys kind of stand on that or what it looks like at Kauai Sure. Coffee. I mean, it's, it's really a mixed bag as far as Hawaiian coffee goes. Um, there are, I mean, the, the thing about Hawaiian coffee is, you know, we live in a really expensive place in the world. Our, you know, cost of land is high, cost of labor is high. Um, we can't compete necessarily in price with a lot right. of the Colombians and, right. you know, um, Vietnam and Brazil. Uh, These are origins. all other, like, coffee Other coffee exporters. origins in the world. So mm -hmm. um, Hawaii is a very expensive place to grow coffee. So what you see... Good thing we have the um, best, then. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best. And that's the thing. we got to play on quality. Yeah. And um, with... Uh, like Kona, for example, a lot of the farms are smaller farms mm -hmm. and um, they can't produce anything on scale. Amazing coffee, but small batch. Yeah. And a lot of producers will source from different Kona farms and, um, you know, make their batch of coffee right. from a variety of farms. Okay, so it's almost like um, those small farms, they're just doing that production mm -hmm. to kind of sell to other people to make the final product and market well, it and it's, it depends on the, the on the the company okay. i can't really speak to that okay, but okay. um you know some sell their own some sell to producers yeah. who will roast it on themselves okay. but um so um a lot of kona that you'll see on the shelf too because um it, it is a little more expensive um uh, for kona origin yeah. um is you'll see a lot of blends on the shelf yeah. And, um, so you see the 10% blend. So you have 10% Kona coffee in there, and then 90% the um, some other origin. Mm -hmm. um, so what's really cool about our company, I think, is that because of our scale, um, we are able to find efficiencies and compete on price and be much less than 100% Kona. And our, our product's 100% Kauai coffee, right from our state, single origin coffee. And we are at a, a much more approachable price point um, for a bag of coffee versus 100% Kona, and um, so then you don't you don't mix because everything you said is from your farm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Everything single origin, right on our state. Yeah. Awesome. Start from to our finish. Our state or the farm? Our estate. Our estate. East <laughs> okay. Our estate Sorry. in the state. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's start to finish. The the coffee is grown there in the coffee trees, yeah. and then brought right to our mill um, for the wet milling and then the dry milling. And then our roast plants right there, our packaging's right there. So start to finish, this bag of coffee here was, um, you know, it it was born on our farm and packaged on our farm. So it's pretty cool. It's it's you know, I would say one of, if not the closest um, brand you could find in the island where it's just a direct link to the farm. Yeah, since you guys made that transition, since the infrastructure was there for sugar, is that what allowed this to be a location that you could do that whole production cycle on site? 
Um, or did you still, did it still need to expand bigger to kind of incorporate everything? We are, we're on the same land that um, the sugar was on. Same size, all same, that. Same, I'll have to check on that. I'm not exactly <laughs> Don't sure, lie to me. but it was, it's uh, approximately the same okay, size. Okay. <laughs> and then of course we had to do some modifications to the factory and things like yeah. that to um, be able to process coffee instead of sugar, but um, yeah. So are there any like super distinct or unique flavors you guys have or like your, this is our best coffee? Get this one. Oh, gosh. The, like, I mean, what are the flavors we have here? Well, so here, so these are the bags that you can find in our retail stores. Um, we've got our medium roast, which is our, our best seller. Um, we've also got a dark roast. And then I brought two of our better selling flavors, the vanilla mac nut and the coconut caramel crunch. Nice. So um, a lot of coffee purists like their either medium or dark roast. Um, and then the interesting thing about our flavored coffees is they are all natural. So um, we don't have any artificial flavors. Or so then where are you getting that stuff from? Um, we're sourcing that from a company in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. Not in Hawaii. Not. Not. Hawaii. not okay. Everything's not from Hawaii. Okay, we won't talk flavors. about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, yeah, but we've got a lot. We um, make a really nice pea berry, um, and the pea berry is a real special bean. It's kind of like a, a freak of nature bean. We only get it in about 2% of our crop, and um, it's one bean in a pod versus the normal two in a coffee bean, and it really has really bright, um, you know, more bolder flavors. And um, we can do something like that on a large scale where smaller coffee farms don't get enough pea berry to be able to, to provide to customers. And then, so is that something that's in just one of these normal blends or that becomes its own special variety? It becomes variety? its own special variety. Oh, okay, so and you guys have like some seasonal stuff. Yeah, on. well, actually we do a lot of specific um, blends or flavors, blends meaning blends from the variety of coffee that we grow in our state. Um, uh, that are really a, um, a, a kind of like a state uh, premium estate grown coffee and you can only find them at the visitor center or online on kawaiicoffee.com. Uh, so we do some special stuff um, you know, for the customers that come in and um, have a chance to see the farm and, and check out our special our special variety. That's cool. I want to hear a little more about that. It's cool to hear that you guys kind of built that visitor center in the 90s and I feel like recently the whole like agro-tourism thing has really increase, especially for small farmers that kind of need to um, have something else going on on mm -hmm. the farm. So can you kind of talk about some of those different ways you guys bring in the community or kind of what, what you expose them to there? Mm -hmm. Or do you guys, are you guys taking like tours through the coffee farm or is it all just tasting or mm -hmm. how do you guys kind of shape that? Yeah, um, all of the above actually. So um, we do have our visitor center which is open to the public and um, so you can come on your own or as part of a tour we get, um, you know, when the cruise ships come into the island we get a lot of um, cruise tours come through. Um, but it's, it's a great way to spend a couple hours or half a day when you're, when you're on Kauai. Um, the visitor center has um, this really cool deck where we've got um, about 30 or so different varieties of coffees that we make. Um, you know, I mentioned that we, we do some special stuff there. Uh, for retail, you know, we can, you can only find between, you know, four and six varieties. Right, right. We have like 30 plus that we make and that you can find on our, at our visitor center. And so you can sample for free all of these coffees that we make and just, you know, get your caffeine fix there. Um, we also have a self-guided tour. Um, that you can kind of browse through the, the coffee trees and there's lots of, um, you know, informative pieces that, uh, you know, educate you about the coffee. You guys have like signs up mm -hmm. or something? And oh. we also do guided tours too. Um, so it's... Just let them run wild on Yeah, that. let them run. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you don't want to run wild, um, we, we, have, we do have guided tours where it gets a little bit more in depth and the history of coffee and um, you know, the history of our farm and how coffee is made, et cetera. Um, and then so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool place to visit. And we also do some outre outreach across the island. Um, one of our uh, employees actually goes and just samples coffee to visitors and locals I that's all you. over. The well, no, that's this is another one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be everywhere. So, but yeah, she's out on Kauai talking about um, Kauai coffee and why it's awesome, and bringing more more people to the farm. Cool, so. awesome. We're gonna take a quick one minute break and uh, learn a little bit more. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. 
You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Stand in the hall of fame Welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer series. I am Justine Spiritu. My guest today is the famous Donna Hayes with Kauai Coffee Company. Uh, she was just giving me kind of the background of Kauai Co Coffee Company and I kind of grilled her in coffee history in general. So thank you for all that knowledge. <laughs> My <and> pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So um, you already kind of touched on uh, your focus on soil quality. Um, so I kind of want to hear more about that and how you guys kind of sustain that and your kind of sustainability initiatives in general, if you can kind of talk about that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're doing some pretty cool things on the farm as it relates to sustainability. And um, I think it's, it's one of our focuses. We want to try our best to do, you know, put our best foot forward and, and do what we can to help the environment, minimize impacts and, and all that. Um, so we're, we're doing a variety of things. Um, the first is that um, we have a drip irrigation system to feed and water our coffee trees. Um, we actually have As the- As opposed to? Well, so drip irrigation is um, special because um, we've got tubing that is right along each tree. And, um, and we've got, it's like 2,500 miles of t these, these drip irrigation tubes. And um, what it does is it applies the water and the fertilizer directly to the root of each tree. And, you know, if you have like a sprinkler going or something like that, you got a lot of extra water in the soil and the air. Um, so we're really focusing on applying that water and that fertilizer exactly where it's needed and no more. Nothing mm -hmm. else, um, you know, added to the environment other than right there at the root of the tree where it's needed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helping to minimize water use um, and, uh, you know, fertilizer, you know, less, less stuff in the, in the environment. So yeah. um, we also have a composting program on the farm. Um, and this is pretty cool. We've got um, a seven acres now. It's, it's going to probably expand to about 10 acres where um, we actually compost. Oh, so this is what we have up here now. Oh, yes. This is, yeah, this is our compost. Wow, our compost all like area. Stages. Yes, exactly that. So all of the coffee cherry pulp, and that's kind of the outer layer of that um, coffee fruit that gets discarded during the milling process to get to the final bean. Um, all of that gets thrown into the compost pile, um, as well as you know the, the trimmings and, and stuff like that. And um, you know when it's ready, we put it right back into the soil, and it's super nutritive for the trees. So um, that's that's something cool that we're doing. Um, and how much space is that taking up on the... Right, it's about seven acres. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huge. So, and it's crazy. You go out there, you feel like you're on Mars or something. It's yeah. just really, really cool. Um, and yeah, you stick your arm in, it's like so hot, you know, so, but yeah. they got, they're turning them and um, getting them all prepared. And then for, you guys, oh, so, okay. So I, you, I know you guys use cover. How much of your land gr growing... Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> They're cover crops. Sorry. Um, we are working. <laughs> what, what are you guys using and how much area has Yeah, that? absolutely. Um, we, so we are in the process of planting. The goal is to get the whole farm planted. Uh -huh. um, you know, we're kind of in the starting phase um, and we've got like 18 acres that are unplanted right now that we're starting fresh with the cover crop and then we just planted the coffee trees. So that's kind of in a, a pre-organic state right now um, because it's, it's kind of set up to maybe potentially test with some organic things in the future. Um, but we are, we've got, gosh, um, daikon is one and we've got like some huge daikon um, just planted right in the midst of the coffee trees and um, oh that's awesome yeah so and it's, it's intercropping stuff yeah so and it's a natural weed deterrent so um, it you know reduces the need for herbicides and things like that when you've got the cover crops because it's keeping the weeds away yeah. and then it's of course shading the soil and um, you know to help uh, reduce evaporation of water 
and of course um, providing you know added nitrogen into the soil. So it's this really like beautiful symbiotic relationship that's going on. Um, the goal is to plant as much as possible. I mm -hmm. can't speak to exactly how much is currently um, <laughs> being planted. I won't so. ask. I won't ask. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with that dicot? Um, well, we love you to. Get to take it home. Oh, we don't. <laughs> over there. <laughs> it's over there. Um, well, uh, you know, we'll pick a couple here and there when we've got people that we're showing the farm and what we're doing. Yeah. But essentially, it stays in the soil, and as it decomposes, that's where that really nitrogen-rich oh, okay. property gets added back into the coffee trees. Okay. So, um, uh, and, and then me right oh. there. Well, after we can, mm -hmm. if there's more, yeah, yeah that you want to say on that. Uh -huh. But I also kind of want to know your role and kind of like, yeah, what you're doing with the farm, and do you talk a little bit about that? What I'm doing with the farm, well, I'm by no means a farmer, but um, I work very closely hand in hand with all of the team from uh, the farm operations to the roast plant. And, you know, I'm responsible for the retail sales for mm -hmm. Hawaii. And um, what happens on the farm is very important because that will impact what happens in the bags of coffee that I sell. Yeah. So, and so you really get to have that hands on experience or really get in there and are seeing how the farmers are doing things so then you can kind of bring that back when you're kind of selling the product mm -hmm. exactly exactly that personal experience so really see what's going yeah on. and i think what's really cool about the company is our story it is our sustainability efforts it is you know that we are you know this operation on Kauai that's providing jobs for you know we're, we're one of the bigger employers on the island how many um, can i ask you how many employees yeah so we've got um i think it's about 80 full-time and another 120 or so supplemental that come in for the harvest and help as needed kind of thing uh -huh. um so i'd say you know 200 total including some of the part-timers uh -huh. and one on oahu that's me <laughs> so um but yeah i mean i work very closely with the farm because what happens with the crop if we're going to have a really good year or a really bad year that's going to impact our cost and stuff like that um, i work very closely with our roast master um, because as far as product goes you know we need to be hand in hand on forecasting on making sure that i'm getting him what he needs to roast the right stuff for my customers so mm -hmm. um, yeah it's it's pretty cool to be working so closely with all different aspects of the operation and it's unlike yeah. really any other position that I've had before. Yeah, so, so bringing up the roast uh, master, there's something we talked about uh, cupping, which is another thing that's kind of specific to making sure you have like a good quality coffee product. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so a coffee cupping is uh, essentially, it's, a, it's an assessment, it's a sensory assessment of the coffee. And um, you know, you analyze the aromas and the flavors and the body and the structure and you can um, you know really identify nuances if there's flaws you know and really kind of just get and an is idea this like in a lab or this is just all I mean this through, is like, in a tasting. lab this is absolutely in a lab oh, okay, okay. so um, yeah if you think about you know in the wine world I came, right, yeah, I came I from imagining, wine like, you know wine you get the sommelier of, of and they're <laughs> you know doing exactly that so or not exactly but similar and um, we actually, so our roast master is um, what they call a licensed Q grader. So he has the highest certification to be able to identify what's going on in this coffee. Um, so he's just, you know, really closely watching throughout the production process what's going on with the coffee. And as far as quality control goes, um, they perform cuppings um, at least three times throughout the production process to monitor um, you know, what those beans are like, what we can expect um, from the, that coffee, because it all gets graded by the USDA at the end of it, and it uh, behooves us to make sure we've got the quality and the cons consistency. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's definite, um, uh, yeah, we, we closely watch the, the, the quality and, and monitor that all throughout the process. And so then that's happening on site. On site, and that's something that's probably unique to us because other farms aren't really working at our scale, so they're not really equipped to do that. And so that's one thing that we're doing to make sure that we've got that consistency over time. Mm -hmm. so. um, and so I want to kind of ask uh, about other kind of trends you guys see in the coffee industry. Is this kind of like the plateau of we have these products or these flavors, and we have these crops we're growing, or what do you kind of see of what kind of new initiatives are there to do in coffee or okay that's a good question um i think you know 
I hope this isn't it. I think we've got a lot of potential, and we're as far as you know. Since I've been on board, I think we've only scratched the surface, and there's yeah. there's so many directions we can take it. Um, where Hawaii plays in the coffee business, um, we really need to play on quality, because as I mentioned before we can't produce a cheap bag of coffee because of the labor, because of the cost of the land, so we can't compete with you know, some of those other coffees that you find on the shelf on a lower price point. So it's important for us to educate the customer on mm -hmm. why this is a better product and yeah. you know, really what's in their bag. And that's important to you know, millennials, for example, or one of our, our um, you know, big uh, customer base in the market. And so they, they want to know the story. They want to know, you know, what is the origin? What's the story? Yeah. And you know, where's it coming from? And am I am I putting my money to a good cause? Yeah. Um, so really, uh, for us, it's really to continue to play on the quality, and um, and go from there. Um, gosh, as far as trends in the market, I would say you know single serves are still doing really well. The you know the cake cups, the um, single serve machines. Yeah. Um, we actually do make a single serve. Um, but it, it's not like a K-cup, um, it has kind of like a mesh screen underneath it. Um, so people in you know, your world, I know it's like single serve, so much plastic. And I think, uh, gosh, I heard a, um, what is the latest quote was, I think the K-cup um, waste, I think can now wrap around the world like 11 times yeah. annually. It's crazy. Stop it. So I know, but um, we, we do make a K-cup. It's not a K-cup. We make a single serve pod and there's much less plastic being used in ours. So if okay. you're, if you're looking for the convenience aspect, like, yeah, this one has so yeah, I know that's the thing. It's like some people just want the convenience and yeah. there's a customer for that. Yeah. So, um, you know, let's make it as good for the world as we can while still catering to their needs. Yeah. So awesome. and cold brew. Cold brew is coming. <laughs> oh, I wish I could hear more about that. But we're actually out of time. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and joining us today thank and giving you. us the story of Kauai Coffee Company. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs>